In this video, we're going to take a look at finding the least common denominator, or least common multiple of polynomials, which is exactly the same way we found the least common denominator of monomials, or even numbers. We simply have to use all unique factors with the highest exponent. We won't ever repeat a factor, but every unique factor, and then we'll assign any exponents that are necessary to get the highest exponent in the, in each fact, in each mon, in each polynomial. However, if we're going to use the factors, we need to know what they are. So that means to know what they are, we must first factor each polynomial, which is what we're going to do here in this first example. We have x squared plus 3x minus 18 and x squared plus 4x minus 21. To find the least common denominator, we need to first factor. Fortunately, we have a 1 in front of x squared, so x squared we know is going to be x times x. And we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and add to 3. Well, 18 is 6 times 3, and if the 6 is positive and the 3 is negative, It'll work out to the right polynomial. Let's also try the other one. The other one also has a 1 in front of x squared, so we know it's x times x, and we need to multiply to negative 21, different signs because it's negative, and add to 4. Well, 21 is 7 times 3, and to add to 4, we need a positive 7 and a negative 3. For our least common denominator, then, or least common multiple, we need to represent all factors with highest exponents. Well, we don't have any exponents here, so we simply need all factors. There's an x plus 6, an x minus 3. We see an x plus 7, and you'll notice we already have x minus 3, so we don't need to write it again. We are done, then, with each factor represented, no exponents to worry about on this example. The least common denominator is x plus 6 times x minus 3 times x plus 7. Let's try another example. In this next example, keep that first example on the screen, we've got x squared minus 10x plus 25 for our first polynomial. Again, we have to factor. We might notice that we can take the square root of x squared to be x, and the square root of 25 to be 5. If we can take the square root of the first and last term, it may be a perfect square, something you always want to watch out for. The way we test is we multiply those together times 2. That gives us 10x, which matches in the middle. We do have a perfect square. We take the square root of the first term, sine from the middle, minus the square root of the last term, which is 5. This is x minus 5 squared. Second polynomial, we can't do that nice trick on, so we are going to look at it. x squared is x times x, and because we've got that 1 in front, we want to multiply to negative 20, different signs, and add to negative 1. 4 times 5 works if the 5 is negative and the 4 is positive. So now, for the least common denominator, we need to use all factors. We've got an x minus 5, an x plus 4, and we already have x minus 5, so we don't write it again. But we do want to look to see if we have any exponents. Remember, we have to assign the highest exponent. And on x minus 5, there's an exponent of 2, which means our highest exponent on x minus 5 must be squared. The least common denominator is x minus 5 squared times x plus 4, using all unique factors with highest exponents.